Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it's time for us to review Control Ultimate Edition Cloud version, which is fun to say, on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the splendid Kate Gray and has been adapted for video by me. But before we get into things proper, I do just want to say that because this is using cloud technology, your own experience may well differ from what you hear in this review and what you'd see in this review. But anyway, that's more more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. If you haven't played Control yet, the game's newest release on Nintendo Switch might be enough to finally tempt you to give it a go. But one question looms large over the Switch's version of the game, does it actually run well on Nintendo's less powerful home console? Well, the short answer is yes. The slightly longer answer is it runs well enough, and the even longer answer is everything else I'm about to say. Developer Remedy has partnered up with Ubitus or Ubitus, I'm not confident with either, which is a cloud gaming company, in order to release the first cloud version Switch title to launch globally. And yes, yes, we know there's things like Resi 7 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but they only came out in Japan, so that doesn't count as worldwide. The fundamental difference between Control on Xbox and PlayStation and the cloud version on Switch is that the game is not running natively on the Switch itself, rather it is streamed remotely from Ubitus's much more powerful servers than the old little diddly switchy magoo. The obvious downside to this is that your Switch has to be connected to the internet in order to run the game. I mean, that much should be obvious, but we want to make sure that everyone knows. Basically, the Switch isn't built to handle colossal, technologically taxing games, although we have seen some exceptions to that, but this workaround means that Switch owners will potentially be able to play them, with a small sacrifice in graphical fidelity and input latency. Oh, and it would be remiss of us to fail to point out that despite carrying a premium price tag, there's the danger that you'll lose access to control on Switch if the servers ever get turned off in the future, which is an event Eventuality we'll probably all have to get used to if cloud gaming really is the future. For those who aren't familiar, Control is an MC Escher and House of Leaves inspired game about Jessie, a woman led to the Federal Bureau of Control as part of her search for something? The FBC looks like any other office, at least to begin with, you know, brutalist concrete walls towering over uncomfortable leather seating, and rows and rows of desks all lined up in window-lined rooms, but it soon becomes clear that there are sinister and indeed supernatural things going on behind closed doors. Large parts of the game are squirreled away in lore documents and FMV sequences, drawing a fair amount of inspiration from Remedy's previous title, Alan Wake, who also gets his own DLC, but we'll get onto that in just a smidgen. Upon starting the game, two options are laid before you, enhanced graphics mode, which caps the frame rate at 30 but includes higher detail, and indeed ray traced lighting, and enhanced performance mode, which issues the ray tracing for 60 lovely frames a second. And that's generally what you're going to see in this video. If you see this icon in the corner, that means this is in graphics mode, but there's not going to be a lot of that because it's nicer in performance mode. And if the game detects any internet instability, the player will be bumped down to enhanced performance mode for a while, allowing a a smoother experience, although I personally never came across that, which was nice. As previously stated, we should note that our experience with the game may well differ to your own, depending on your connection speed and the reliability of your internet service provider, but yeah, I just wanted to make that clear again. And realistically, playing the game docked with your Switch linked to your router via a wired connection is naturally going to help keep latency at a minimum. But what if your home internet setup is woefully inadequate or you just don't know whether it's going to cut the mustard? Well, worry not. There's a short trial period during which you can establish if Control plays nicely with your particular internet connection, and you only have to hand over cash for the full game after this trial session has elapsed. Input latency, perhaps the biggest worry people have about cloud gaming in general, isn't as huge a problem as you might expect here, and there were very few times we actually felt like the game was lagging behind our button inputs, which is remarkable just on its own. Still, when it comes to visuals, there are some moments where Control yeah, struggles a bit. Enhanced graphics mode gives players reflections and more realistic lighting, but it doesn't really make a huge difference, and since enhanced performance also looks pretty damn tasty, and the ray tracing can actually make things look a little bit fuzzy around the edges whenever the camera moves, and when playing in handheld mode, this becomes even more pronounced, muddying the high-detailed world into a hazy, similar shades of grey kind of 
mush. What's more, the small, fiddly Joy-Con also aren't well suited to the precision that the combat requires, making the game just generally better suited to playing on the big screen, and indeed with a pro controller if at all possible. It also turns out that the color red doesn't handle compression very well at all, and if there's one thing you need to know about control, it's that red is everywhere. For the most part, the game handles the accents of reds just fine, but some boss battles and set pieces require the entire room to be bathed in this particular wavelength. Throw in a busy scene, particles, explosions, a load of enemies, and it just ends up looking a bit like a jam jar that someone's dropped on the floor and then bled all over. It's hard to see who you should be firing at or just generally what's going on, making specific moments in the game much harder than they realistically should be. The difficulty in general, though, is fairly well balanced. Control's greatest strength is in its gorgeously kinetic combat where Jessie really comes into her own. Everything in the room is either grabbable or destroyable, and Control makes the most of that with Jessie's incredible telekinetic powers, hurling chunks of wall at enemies until they explode in a satisfying puff of shimmering powdery stuff. In later levels when Jessie's filled out her skill tree, it's easy to take out enemies in just one hit of a well-aimed desk chair hurtling through the air, and the game fills rooms with endlessly spawning low-level enemies, just to give you that joyful feeling of power. Unfortunately, at the start of the game when Jessie has naught but a rubbish gun to defend herself with, it can drag a little bit compared to the later game. Control is not really a shooting game. I mean, Jessie's gun is a large part of her arsenal, and though it makes sense from a narrative perspective to hold off giving her superpowers for a few hours, the latter game is way more fun with all the cool things that she can do under your instruction. Story-wise as well, the game can be a bit of a turn off early on. Like Jesse, the player takes many hours to understand exactly what's happening within the Federal Bureau of Control, and playing through those hours can occasionally feel a bit like turning up at a party where everyone knows everyone else, except you and you're frantically just constantly trying to catch up. Once Jesse is beefed up enough that fights become a matter of minutes to complete, the game's first of two DLCs will open up. AWE, an Alan Wake-themed investigation into a new shadowy enemy. Once the main game is finished, the second DLC becomes available known as The Foundation, which is a post-game exploration of the FBC's origin. Both DLCs and the main game updates within them bring new mechanics, new weapons, and new upgrades to your existing powers alongside general quality of life tweaks to the game itself. AWE is a fun continuation of Control's main game, although it largely relies on the player's knowledge of Alan Wake to be truly fulfilling. But The Foundation, which deals with a new threat to the Bureau, feels like a strange misstep. Despite its compelling story hook, The Foundation is difficult to navigate and even harder to figure out, with minimal signposting and a confusing map. It's much more of a slog than the main game, and even its new crystal-themed create and fracture abilities just happen to kind of fall flat next to Jesse's existing powers. All in all, Control is almost as fantastic on Switch as it is on any other console, and although it has occasional frame rate drops and the odd bit of compression here and there, it's a feat in itself that it can be played on Nintendo's home console. For anyone who has a Switch as their main or preferred or even just only method of playing games, it's a no-brainer, especially with the addition of a Pro Controller, but as you might might expect, other consoles and PC are better up to the task of running the game if you have them. If this is the first step to many other high-powered games on the Switch though, it's a bloody good one. Control is and has always been a fantastic game, that's not in doubt. Remedy's skill when it comes to creating a highly detailed game world is world class, and the gloriously dynamic combat is second to none once you've unlocked the required skills in-game at the very least. The Nintendo Switch may not be the absolute best way to play Control if you're looking for crisp, beautiful graphics and rock-solid performance, but it's perfectly good if you've got a relatively stable internet connection, and indeed, once again, one of them are Pro Controllers. You've reached the end of the video, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts, core lummy. I really enjoyed playing this on Switch. Um, I did have a few issues overall, and it all, it all comes down to the cloud thing, and I don't want to talk too much about that because at the end of the day, the game needs to be talked about, and the game is brilliant. I really like the game, and I really want to continue playing it, but I'm... ha. Huh. Ah. I encountered a few issues that I don't believe Kate did, and the biggest one of all, besides compression, which... 
I, I just have an eye for compression and I hate it, but I, I kind of got past that after a while and it's soft, but even then, you know, I was playing on a big 4K monitor. That was my own fault really, wasn't it? But the big thing for me was the audio delay. There is, there is very little input lag when it comes to, well, inputs, you know, controllers and things like that. But the audio? For some reason, the audio was behind everything else on the screen and audio is so easy to transmit, I think. I'm, not, I'm really not an expert, but have a look at this. This is what I mean. What do you know about this? Not much. Only what I've seen. Well, they use the same tactics that Marshall and Salvador taught us, which makes me think that the hiss haven't completely erased the people inside. It's just like the audio is behind everything else on screen, and it's really, really jarring. And there's even, like, complete dropouts of the audio for a fraction of a second, and I was kind of hoping when that happened that it was tr trying to sort of catch up with itself, but it only seemed to get worse over time. It, it didn't make it unplayable because, you you know, a lot of the time it's just kind of noise going on. It's not like playing something like Smash or anything like that, which again, input that probably helps that side of things as well. But even so, it, it was just distracting. It was distracting to see somebody talking and then the words coming out of their mouths. Well, not out of their mouths, more to the point. What it has done, though, is make me really want to play Control. I'm probably going to continue to play this, or I might buy the PS4 version? I don't know. I just... I'm still not sold on cloud gaming. I just... I don't know. But if all of that sounds like a non-issue to you and you don't mind the idea of just being connected to the internet, th this is the same great game, and it is a great game. Enjoy.